Afternoon, everybody. Um, I feel like this is just going to be another extension of the panels and the presentations we have. Originally, I'm in uh, construction visualization, so I relate very strongly with what uh, Stephen just presented. Um, going back and forth, uh, presenting or kind of defining what we're going to present today. Um, actually, let me just start with who I am. So I'm 22 years with Fluor. Uh, past roles, I've been on the project site for 16 years. I was a site IT manager, moving into construction automation lead on the project sites. So on the, on the construction project sites, we support multiple um, software packages that support multiple different uh, aspects within the project. So I supported that on the project sites. Then I moved down to uh, Houston in 2016, where I was a construction automation manager. So that's supporting multiple projects with the same kind of idea, supporting the projects, um, understanding what IT, um, they needed and setting that up. And then I went into a role on uh, construction technology. So construction technology goes beyond those static state tools that we use and really goes in what, what technology is out there that we can bring into construction to support our project. So it's to support safety, to support the schedule, to support any aspects of that. I did that for a couple of years and then uh, was nominated as a Fluor Fellow for construction automation. So a Fluor Fellow for some reason, they think I, the Fluor thinks I really know what I'm doing. I'm kind of a knowledge person for that. So with the fellowship, we we're able to go in and participate in a lot of these conferences and gather that information, take that back to our company and kind of have that knowledge uh, spill out. Um, I am a construction visualization uh, manager right now. And just this recently, these, a few months ago, I created a construction visualization group. And it basically has four legs to it. Um, we do everything with uh, immersive uh, reality. Uh, look at the 360 virtual tours, look at unmanned drones, and basically create animations for the project. So just have a recent case where within two weeks, I created from a 2D plot plan to a 3D model to a 4D simulation, which is linking the model to the schedule to bringing that into virtual reality. And the concept was to support our proposals in the whole animation side is if the clients, and, and a lot of these uh, subjects, we've been exposed to it throughout the whole conference, um, but the visual side is so important for the clients, for even our own uh, internal projects with the engineering and the, and the construction as well. So my whole world is based around everything visualization uh, that we could bring into our projects. So, I want to take a little bit, or what, if you're unfamiliar with, uh, with, who, what, with who Fluor is, we're one of the largest engineering, procurement, fabrication, construction, and maintenance companies. We're globally based um, in all continents, uh, 4,000 clients, 60 countries. We're top 164 on the Fortune 500, and we're going on a, our 107th uh, year. So multiple business lines, we support energy and chemicals, infrastructure and power, mining, life sciences, government, and diversified services. So with my global role, I really uh, make contact with all these different business lines, understand their needs, and uh, just as Stephen was saying, kind of have that own internal group around visualization that supports these projects. So one aspect I really wanted to, to touch on for my talk is not really the technologies that were developed, but how we introduce this into the company. So how we introduce the, from the ideation to actually imp implementation on the project. So this is kind of our life cycle. So from ideation, we have a very detailed process about gathering that information, um, taking those ideas, vetting the ideas, then you go in and say, okay, that's, that's a good idea. Let's do a little more research on it. So we have a little team that goes in, um, goes out, gets, uh, researches that technology or that technology or that idea. If there's technologies that's associated with it, we go out there, see what's out there, create a little internal business case. We present that to the executive board. And then if they kind of give the green light, um, then we proceed. And depending on where we are at the level, um, we've got a lot of examples where projects have already kind of dove into this. So we have a lot of already existing examples of ROI or, or cases. And some of it are like, here's an idea that we want to do and pursue. Can we present this and, and go for it? So then there's that whole step with uh, reaching out to the vendors, uh, coming up with the vendor agreements, um, going through uh, IT governance, 
And a lot of items get stuck with IT governments. So one of my main goals is to really bring in the IT group and the vendors together, and you kind of just have a checklist of what IT is looking for, so it's very transparent um, for the vendors to understand what we're going for. And it's very hands-on, the whole process, um, going through each groups, going through finding the value. Um, and IT governance is often a big stalemate with a lot of companies, and it is with Fluor as well, but we're really putting a lot of focus on how to uh, streamline that process. And then uh, you create that information plan, and then you start looking at the pilots, uh, or projects for that piloting. And then what's it take for that pilot, the pilot definition, um, staffing and training. Once you go through and are successful, so after that pilot, either it's a terrible idea or there's no value to it, and we dump it, or there's some means to this, then we start pushing it out to other projects. And that's where you have a whole process on documenting those steps, identifying who those key um, subject matter, matter experts are, examples, uh, create those presentations so we could um, broadcast the awareness of it, and then um, that we call that program kind of Excel to Win. And Fluor has one concept called one ten times. So if you have one idea, it's great, but it's only really um, considered successful if we can replicate that ten times on different projects. Uh, we have a group called Business Transformation and Innovation. Their main focus, so they have two main fo focuses, it's that idea growth and imp implementation engine. So they go out there, they capture the ideas, they nurture those ideas, they support in implementing them and in growing them. And we have a very involved, robust innovation kind of culture within Fluor, and we really use our intranet a lot. So each one of these little boxes takes you to a different page on the community where I have an idea, you could go in, type out what your idea was, um, identify what group you're from, uh, the potential benefits, um, that gets reviewed, that gets shared, and there's various levels of um, areas that kind of nurture that idea, share it out, see if there's any, any other areas in the company, and it's a, a massive company, so different business lines, um, very transparent on these ideas, so we get a lot of uh, content sharing with it. And then uh, we started out this Innovation Unwrapped um, in 2015, and that was basically to really put a catalyst to innovation. Go out there, identify who in the company are the innovators. And we, the first two years, we worked with Autodesk. So we went out to San Francisco. We had 40, um, selected 40 uh, people from all different business lines. I was part of that initial team. And the whole week was to get us out of our mindset on what innovation is, kind of rethink about how that ideation process works, kind of blow out the, the walls on constrained thinking. Oops, so it was really good focus. And that first two years, we had our Fluor executives kind of come up with um, ideas on what they're trying to, to fix. Uh, my team was just basically try to save 25% on the schedule. And then we had, as soon as that first year, is how can we improve the innovation culture within Fluor? So some ideas about um, promoting culture, getting that people out of their head, um, getting them involved. And then the last two years, we actually partnered up with clients and said, it was, what is your pinch point on your project sites, whatever industry you have? And this team will basically support in solving some problem solving these ideas. And those last two years, that's where a lot of our technology um, ideas came out, and um, lo a lot of these are based around safety as well, is how can we use technology to improve our safety on the projects. So um, some of these ideas were around virtual reality, uh, using 360 tours, and I'll, I'll touch on those a little bit. Um, idea status, we have a dashboard that kind of identifies some of the ideas. Um, this year we had a total of 600 ideas, and it kind of captures on the review process to see eh, these ideas are they have been implemented or there wasn't a lot of value to continue going with them. So we had 55% of those, 28% uh, of the ideas got implemented, uh, 17 are pending, or 17, what the 17 letters? Oh yeah, 70% is either pending uh, as far as being open or they haven't been addressed yet. So again, there's a, a site that our employees can go in 
uh, open up any one of these ideas, get very detailed um, I, um, understanding of where you are as far as the whole process, what the idea was, uh, links to some examples. Um, we create a, a flash, and Excel to Win is basically that concept about capturing those ideas and promoting it. So every month, we have a, um, a webinar, a WebEx, that kind of brings in on identifying one of these Excel to Win flashes to talk more details. So we have a tracking mechanism that identifies, uh, again, it's a, a flash that basically is just an infographic and informa information on that particular idea. And it goes over a little description about what it is, the uh, experts, the, 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 you know, the, if there's any ROI, some examples. So these projects can really get an under, understanding of what it takes to implement these ideas. And then there's, here's that one to 10 times concept where you have one idea implemented 10 times. So there was a study through FIATEC, which is part of uh, Construction Industry Institute, and um, likely of getting that, that idea that was very successful on one project implemented on another is 93%. But as you can see, when you go down anything over 10 uh, plus projects, it's down to a 19% uh, success rate. So Fleur pays a lot of attention on taking these great ideas and making sure that they're pushed out to the right people, they have a very un good understanding of what it takes to get these ideas up and running. Uh, some of our examples, we've got, uh, especially with this case, we've got virtual reality. And I'll show example at the end. Uh, with virtual reality, and this is coming from the Innovation Unwrap team, is how can we increase awareness of, of uh, safety on the project sites? So these big industrial project sites, uh, very unsafe, a lot of things, moving parts going on. So the team came up with uh, using virtual reality. And it was uh, safety training under virtual reality. Uh, 360 virtual tours, I was actually very much involved with that one, is I just bought a 360 camera, it was a Garmin Verb, uh, went out to visit a project site, and said, hey, I've got this camera, let me just go around and start taking photos and we'll just kind of see what happens. And then I, always, I was in intentionally looking at just using a PowerPoint and putting these little uh, links of the 360 photos on the PowerPoint and we're bringing it up. And then I got introduced to a software called Pano2 VR, which $300, you download it, you bring in your photos, it basically creates these tours. And uh, after about, it took about 50 hours to create this very interactive tour where you bring up the plot plan. Uh, and it's just like streaked uh, Google Earth view where you spin around, you can see the 360, uh, you can see another photo in the distance, you click on that, it, it transports you to the other photo. But again, we wanted to see what we can do uh, with the 360 tours to enhance safety. So with the software that we had, you are able to go in, you have your 360 panoramic view, be able to bring in videos and, and uh, PDFs and graphics to kind of add that level of information. So as you're looking around the, uh, the project, there may be a piece of heavy equipment or a crane. And then Fluor has a program called uh, Life Critical, which is basically the nine main areas on a project site that you need to be aware of safety concerns, to be aware of. So working at heights, working around human machine interface, heavy equipment, cranes and rigging, confined space. So in these tours, as you're looking around, there's a piece of crane, now you have a graphic that you can click on and that opens up more information on working around cranes. Or you have a scaffolding, a piece of scaffolding. So you look around, click on the graphic, now there's more information about working at heights. So really interactive way. So we introduced on, this definitely kind of supports safety, but we introduced it to our site um, safety orientations. So now you can, the instructor can really go through, focus on the areas that his class, that his new class came in and say, okay, I've got a bunch of electricians, they're gonna be working in this area. So he could go in and navigate around the tour um, to these areas that the contractors are going out. So the beauty part about the 360 tours is because it's so interactive, one time taking the photos, there's so many different use users that would benefit from that. So we're really exploring the 360 tours. Uh, recently, we had a project that was focused on heavy equipment and blind spots. So they were gonna bring uh, people over, park all this heavy equipment, and then bring people up to it so they could kind of see this equipment and go, you know, it's huge, it's huge. So what I did was took the, the 360 cameras, put it in the, in the cab, took the photo in the cab, and then uh, positioned safety people around the equipment as well, and then moved the camera to those positions and took the photo as well. So within a tour, 
we brought in, uh, OSHA has uh, blind, uh, blind spot diagrams. So it shows, here's a piece of equipment, and it's all specific to the equipment. Here's a piece of equipment, here's the blind spot, so it's shaped as a gray uh, form, and any, anybody that's in that gray area, they can't see. So you've, we've seen these diagrams, yeah, I, I get it. But through the tour, you're able to actually sit in the cab, look around, see the, you know, the block spaces, transport yourself to these positions around the cab, and really understand what that operator can't see. And it's not designed for the operator, it's mainly designed for the people working around that equipment so they get a better idea. And then we captured uh, three pieces of equipment. Safety absolutely loved it. And now we're gonna start capturing um, all pieces of equipment. And then just more examples. So a lot of these aren't really based specifically on technology. Um, a lot of it are just ideas. Um, so the Fleur Fellows, they're the experts in the company. Uh, they really understand uh, their subject matter and we tie into them um, for any project information. They have a question, they're able to go in and tie into it. And you just see a bunch of different examples. And then um, we have a kind of metrics and a dashboard that also um, identifies the, for each of the different um, flashes, they show examples of, or they, they mark up the projects that they're implemented on. So I don't know if you can see on the bottom, but the colors represent the business line or the group that they uh, come from. So the version online actually identifies the, that particular project name, and whoever is interested in getting more information about that subject, now they have projects and experts on that project that can, they can talk to. So we have a track, um, so anything where the, the goal is to get up to uh, 10 times, and as well, through that link, you could go in, get more information on that particular idea, um, it identifies this if it's one or 10, uh, it brings up the flash, so you could read that flash, that, that, continuously gets updated, and then there's a whole um, page, online page, that's community, it's kind of like um, threads where people um, ask questions, uh, experts answer them, a lot of information sharing. Um, and then one, one thing that we're working on right now is really um, understanding what realware can support our construction projects. So we've gone through uh, business cases, we're starting to go through IT governance, um, and we've had a lot of examples of, of what we can do with that. So I kind of whizzed through this. I want to show uh, one example of what we're doing through our Fluor uh, safety virtual reality uh, training. So it's virtual reality safety training. We've got uh, two examples on working at heights and the human interface um, inter interaction. So the whole process, the whole um, simulation took about 12 minutes, but I just went in and kind of sped it, sped it up. So there's a little bit of audio that goes through it's gonna go through six of these examples. So this is through uh, HTC Vive Pro. Welcome to Fleur's life critical campaign experience. Virtual reality allows us to communicate through actions rather than just words. Your actions to be precise. Squeeze the trigger on your remote. You can use your hands to interact with any so object. So they get familiar in the room. with the controls. You've already got your gloves on, so please put on your hard hat. There's a little bit of humor to it. And then just PPE, put on the PPE. Thanks. It's important to refresh ourselves on the basics. And then it goes through. Please pick up the clipboard. So this is the second one, working at height. Thanks. You can use your other hand to select a scenario. OK, we're loading up the working at height scenario. Before you can work at height, you need to be wearing a harness with your lanyard clipped to an anchor point. We've equipped you with your harness. Please look behind you. You should find where to clip your lanyard to. Use the trigger on your controller to attach yourself to the anchor point. Thanks. Please look around the, the area for any hazards. potential hazards. This toolbox is a trip hazard for anyone coming down this ladder. When you see things like this, think of others, take action, and move it to a safe place. Thank you. That spanner that you dropped earlier is another hazard. Please put the spanner safely inside the toolbox. Thank you. 
Anything dropped from height can be a lethal weapon, which is why there should always be tow boards installed on handrails, just like this. It's a long way down. Now, it may take some courage, but try walking right up to the handrail and try looking right over the edge. That's just one of the reasons you should always do up your chin strap. The other reason is right above you. Even the smallest objects can be lethal if they're dropped from height. Now we're going to give you 90 seconds to teleport around. And then it's just like another game where it's a We've safety hunt. Set up so this they're area given the with little camera. Could be unsafe or and then dangerous. they walk around the area capturing um, safety Your job hazards. is to take photos of everything you think might be suspect. And the whole video is kind of cut short, but there's narration throughout the whole video camera. giving more information about safety and relationship Try to safety. A few shots. But there's a their first kind of introduction to the power of virtuality and how we can use it to support safety. So now we're looking at additional um, opportunities to, to complete all the life cycles, and we're really reaching out to vendors to help us kind of put all this together. And then this one's on uh, motorized heavy equipment. You've selected so kind of the same uh, starting room, and then they go through. Please open the drawer on your right. Pick up the truck and take a good look at it. Place the truck in the highlighted area. Close enough. It can be difficult to comprehend the sheer scale of machinery on site. We're not just being dramatic here. On site, things can approach you at speed with very little warning. That's why we use spotters. Pick up the two spotters and place them on the plans. This spotter is going to teach you a few basic hand signals. This one means move forward. Have a go, use your hands. Make sure your hands are facing the right way round. Try copying exactly what the spotter is doing. Thank you. This one means go backwards. And it goes through those four main um, sign exercises. When you're on site, even in your high vis jacket, you should always assume that you can't be seen. Try making eye contact with the forklift driver now. Now take some time to move around the scene. You can teleport by pulling the left trigger. Now we're going to place you inside the forklift. Take a look all around you and get a feel for how restricted your view is in here. Note how big the blind spots are. Now, try and find your spotter in the left wing mirror. Your spotter will need to give big hand movements to be seen clearly. Now, you're the spotter. We're going to get the forklift to reverse. But first, make sure you have eye contact. Now we're going to back the forklift up. Do the signal for reverse. Ah oh well, close enough. Let's take a better look at what went wrong. Serious accidents can happen in the blink of an eye. They have far-reaching, often devastating impacts to the individual their family, co-workers, job and community. Everyone must remain aware of their surroundings and other activities and personal nearby to avoid catastrophic incidents like this. So like I mentioned, this is kind of the first introduction to virtual reality. And because of the position I'm in, um, I, I set up the projects uh, with that, working with engineering, um, with that construction driven mindset. So uh, we're really looking at um, bringing in the models now, uh, and this is something Fluor has been doing for a long time, is uh, bringing in the BIM model into the virtual reality, so you have your, your design model, 
but using the drones, losing the LIDAR scanning, then you have that reality uh, capture and then bringing that into the virtual reality as well. So we're really comparing the design to uh, what's actually out there. And there's a lot of technologies, a lot of vendors that we're, st we're starting to talk to that kind of bring that whole uh, visualization idea to it. So I know I kind of rushed through a lot of stuff, but I just really want to kind of give you a glimpse of what Fluor is doing with visualization. Um, we definitely feel the pains uh, working with the vendors, trying to going through and getting this implemented. But Fluor does have a very uh, invested uh, interest in getting those ideas out to the field as quick as possible. So here's uh, contacts. I was originally going to uh, present with Michael Wells. Uh, Michael, Michael Wells is part of our, our Vancouver office, and he's uh, heavily invested with the uh, Envision uh, innovation as well. So that's what I have. Do uh, anybody have questions or anything? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Hi there. Yeah. Yeah, so it was just, um, here's kind of our, our pain points that we have with safety, and it was a gaming uh, company that we work with, and that was just an initial introduction. So the next step is really to make it, you know, really reality, the life case uh, situations that were going out there. Um, so that is the idea is to make it more, more realistic. 